Does some of the techniques that are used, certainly in different religious traditions, Buddhist tradition, of uh, meditation and mindfulness, concentrating intently and, and for long periods of time, other than causing psychological changes, maybe well-being, maybe problems in the individual, is there any sense that it, it, can, it can help us to understand what's real as opposed to just something that affects us as individuals? Well, you can actually approach that from two different approaches. One is the practical one of what effects do these kind of experiences have on people and what can you do to make them healthy effects instead of unhealthy effects. The other is the emphasis you put on it of what's real. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, somebody comes to me and says, I go out of my body regularly and see the world from flying around in my soul or something like that, I'm liable to say, oh, can we set up a little test to see if you can actually see things? And in one case where I was able to do that with a young woman I know, she correctly read a five-digit number that was on a shelf up near the ceiling. Now, this was one experiment designed primarily to demonstrate the feasibility of doing an experiment like this, so I never claim that it proves anything, but it shows that you can take a transpersonal or parapsychological experience like that and test its reality, not just automatically dismiss it as it couldn't possibly be, or to jump to the opposite extreme and say, oh yes, my religious teacher tells me that's so and so, and slip it into that pigeonhole. This is what transpersonal psychology is about in one important sense. It's investigating these spiritual phenomena to find out what exactly are they, what consequences do they have, what brings them about, how could you refine them. You mentioned meditation, for instance. Would meditative training help people have certain kinds of experiences? Are they healthy experiences? Or for certain people, would teaching them something like meditation actually be a way of them avoiding dealing with reality and it would be pathological to do that? Because you certainly get the pathology mixed in. And that's part of the transpersonal psychologist's job too, to separate out what's healthy and what's pathological. And this is done with two perspectives. One is you're working with individuals, if you're a clinician, working with uh, uh, people to help them use these techniques to improve their lives, uh, which is one whole approach which can be effective even if there's no basis in reality because you're just dealing mm -hmm. with how the mind works. On the other hand, I think you would say that the, the, there occasionally would be in this process some hints of a deeper reality that you can apprehend because of these techniques that allow you to broaden your, your window for, for mm -hmm. viewing the, the world. Let me give you a specific example of how that can be done. Reincarnation. Some people claim to have memories of previous in incarnations, and these can be induced in good hypnotic subjects. Now, are you getting just fantasies, or is there such a thing as reincarnation and an accurate recall of it? Well, some therapists take the approach that if you have some clinical problem and they're not getting anywhere and helping you with it, and they hypnotize you and you go back to a previous incarnation and experience something that helps you solve the problem, great. Who cares whether it's a fantasy or not? You're better off than you were before. Other people take the approach of, do you come up with memories about a previous incarnation that could be factually checked? When I was still a student at MIT back in the 1950s, for instance, I was shopping in the bookstore one day, and on the remainder table, I saw a book called The Search for Bridie Murphy. And I don't know why I picked it up, because at that time I only read science fiction and hard science books. But somehow, this, they mentioned hypnosis on the cover, and I picked it up. And it was a story of a lay hypnotist, Maury Bernstein, a Colorado businessman, who had regressed this woman to a previous life where she claimed to be named Bridie Murphy, to lived in Ireland in the early 1800s and so forth. And I read the book, and it was pretty good. The author wasn't wild. He said, you know, this is what happened. We ought to research this thing more. What academic can never disagree with, we ought to re research this more. And then somehow, even though it had been remaindered when it first came out, the book hit the bestseller list. And it showed that our culture went absolutely nuts over the concept of reincarnation in the 50s. Because the most outrageous reviews were written about the book, including another book called A Scientific Report on the Search for Bridie Murphy, with chapters by all the people who were the big authorities in hypnosis about these terrible things that this guy Bernstein had said. And I couldn't believe it when I read the book, because they'd say, Bernstein made this outrageous statement. Gee, I don't remember that. Let me go back to the book. No, that's not what Bernstein said. Here are these 
real scientific authorities could go bonkers at the concept of reincarnation and lose touch with reality, it told me that science is not a simple matter of rationally weighing the evidence. So integrating it all together, uh, how important do you think is the development of transpersonal psychology and helping human beings understand the fundamental nature of reality? I think if we don't develop an effective transpersonal psychology, the world will continue going to hell in a handbasket. Okay, as far as I can tell as a transpersonal psychologist, we are spiritual creatures. We have something in us that wants something more, that wants to grow along those dimensions. When we deny that, we get sick in various ways. It's no good to simply tell people, okay, go join up this religion or that spiritual tradition or something like that, because a lot of those things don't work for modern people. Transpersonal psychology will be about how to take ordinary people, healthy people, and let them have direct spiritual experiences and integrate them into their life. Specific example, a common transpersonal experience is a deep, deep feeling that we're all connected, that we're all one. When you have that kind of experience, you no longer have to be told you should be ethical and share and take care of the planet. It's the obvious thing to do. If you don't have that experience, then it's your selfish instincts up against preaching that you should be generous and all that. We need to help people have these kind of experiences and then from a very deep level, we'll get a heck of a lot nicer people on the planet, solve a lot of problems. We need to do it effectively. That's what the research in transpersonal psychology needs to be.